Hi there. You're listening to Norway Next, a podcast by Visit Norway, geared towards the modern travel mindset. If you are going to a Norwegian city anytime soon, this is the podcast for you. Picture this. You're standing on a cobblestone hill in Norway's second largest city, overlooking a quaint neighborhood of old wooden houses, all painted in red, yellow, white, blue, and green surrounded by seven beautiful mountains. Walking towards the historic wharf below, you pass a group of locals, all wearing colorful raincoats, even though the sun is out. Just as you sit down for a snack in a cozy seaside cafe, warm and lively with chatter, the sound of raindrops on the window makes you gaze outside at the cobblestone streets, and you recognize the locals you just passed by, and they somehow seem oblivious to the sudden rain. Welcome to Bergen. I am Beate Gram, and in today's episode, we'll be talking Bergen. And I'm so very happy to welcome Lynn Schuss Falkenberg from Visit Bergen, an expert in all things Bergen. Not only is she a familiar face among locals, guys, she is a really great ambassador for her city. And she will guide us through some of the do not miss things you need to experience while in Bergen. So let's get started. So, Lynn, is it true that Bergen is the most beautiful city in Norway? Of course it is. It's the most beautiful city in the world. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Not modest at all, right? No. Yeah, it really is. So, you mentioned already we have the seven mountains surrounding the city, which makes it really nice that you have the surrounding mountains, you have the seaside, you have the city tucked in between, and uh, it's just you can see the the houses crawl up the hills. Uh, you have the um, the beautiful nature surrounding as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely, it's the most beautiful city, at least in Norway. Mm. So what what do you love the most about your city? So I like what I like the most about Bergen is that you have the the sea, uh, you have the mountains surrounding, and you have the city tucked in between because. Whatever you fancy doing, you have it right there. So the nature is really close to the pulsating city life as well. Mm. So I think we can agree that us as Norwegians, we walk a lot. And one of the things we love the most about our big cities is that they are so incredibly walkable. What are some great walking routes in Bergen? Bergen really is very compact, so you can walk basically everywhere. And I personally try to walk 10,000 steps a day. So I have to be creative uh, since I live there. Um, So I often go walking in the mountains. So then you start down at the city, uh, walk the the bends up to, uh, for instance, Mount Fleian, where you can enjoy uh, walking through the woods at the same time as you work out and also get amazing views from the top when you get there. Uh, and if you're too lazy to walk down, you can take the funicular or you can actually do <laughs> one of the me. other routes. Um, and also walking in the city center, you you can walk along the seaside. Uh, you can walk to the Nornes Peninsula where you can actually go swimming, uh, not only in summer, but actually all year because they have a... Um, a sea bath there where they have a heated uh, saltwater pool. And if you're brave enough, you can actually go for a dip in the in the sea in the winter as well. Um, so I think it's a matter of where you want to walk. You can, so the seaside, you can walk in between the houses. We have a lot of uh, wooden houses, residential areas. So I can find streets I've never walked before, even though I've lived there more mostly all my life. Uh, so walk between the houses. If you think there is a street you're not allowed to walk, just try because just right around the corner there is an exit as well. So um, and it's so cozy with the narrow streets and the cobblestones, um, and you can actually do. Uh, so one of the things I did was uh, to go bar hopping because you just walk between the bars. We have plenty of bars to choose from. And uh, I even um, I even did uh, starters in one restaurant, walked for the main course to the next one, and uh, liquid dessert in one of the cocktail bars. And you can actually even go for a food 
tour. So then you walk around the city and you can actually then also not only learn about the different food, but also you get a part of the history at the same time as well. Nice. That sounds like something that will make me very hungry too. <laughs> so let's get to it. What What are some of your favorite foods in Bergen and what local dishes are your absolute go-tos and where can we find them? So Bergen is at the coast and the seaside, so fish and seafood is definitely something you should try. Uh, Norway is well known for the salmon, but we have so much more. One of my favorite things are uh, scallops and shrimps and crayfish and also the amazing cod. And uh, one of the things you can make is uh, a very local dish called persetosk. And you can actually only find that in Bergen, nowhere else in, in Norway. Uh, and the way they make it is that they take one side with salt and sugar and press it together with the other and leave it there for a while. So it's uh, it's it's hard to describe the dish, but it gives it a really distinct taste. Wow, sugar and fish. Yeah. Never would have thought of that. No, you haven't, but you should definitely taste it. <laughs> and also another thing that is important about the, the food in Bergen is the food scene has evolved quite a lot uh, the past years. And the chefs uh, are very conscious about where they get the, um, the ingredients to make the food. So they go to uh, different local farms. Um, so we actually won the World Cheese Award some years back uh, with a local um, cheese from just outside of Bergen. And also other farmers. So you go to uh, one place and you know this is uh, from Lisa. This cheese is from Lisa. And uh, uh, this cow is from dog. And so you kind of know where the food comes from. So I think it's really important to um, to have that in mind as well. Mm. And the famous Bergen fish soup, right? Definitely. So that's uh, on a more colder day. That's a really nice way to warm up again. Mm. And what's the deal with the shillings bolle? I feel like everywhere I go, I'm offered a cinnamon bun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we do have similar things throughout Norway as well. But the shillings bolle is the real deal for me mm. and all of the people of Bergen. So it it's basically a bun with uh, cinnamon and um, and sugar, but it's just the way it looks, the way it tastes. It's it's just different when you're in Bergen. Mm, I must try, that's for sure. So, Lynn, you are, if possible, one of the most seasoned travelers I have ever met. How many countries have you been to? Uh, I'm actually heading off to my 95th country after this day. Wow, <laughs> I, I got a ways to go there. Uh, so from a travel perspective, does that impact the way you see and experience your own city? Definitely. So when I travel, I uh, try to meet with the locals, uh, learn the culture through their eyes and uh, to be engaged in the local communities. So definitely it gives me a perspective of my own country as well and uh, also my own city. So I think it's important to uh, to understand the places you visit in order to uh, understand your own as well. Absolutely. Thank you. That's a really good reminder. I think that human-to-human -human connection and immersing yourself in local culture is so important when you travel, especially to a city like Bergen. Absolutely. And the people of Bergen are really not afraid to talk to strangers. So just go up to anyone and uh, you can start the conversation just asking for directions. And then from there, you can just ask more questions and uh, and get more personal answers and ask for what is your favorite restaurant? What is your favorite mountain to hike or whatever? And it's you just continue then. And people will engage. Like they will actually elaborate and help you out. Absolutely. So we're not shy, and we're uh, we really want to help. And the people of Bergen love to talk. So uh, definitely, yeah, if, if you start, I'm not sure if you can make them stop. <laughs> Here at the Norway Next podcast, we like to play a little game of yes, yes, no. Basically, two facts and one false statement. We'll say the three things, and our listeners will guess which of the three is the false one. Here we go. So for Bergen, is it A, you can go waterfall watching in the region around Bergen, B, 
Bergen is the city with the most rainfall in Norway. C, reindeer hot dogs are very popular here. We'll reveal the answer later in the episode. Again, you, the listener, should guess which of these is false. Okay, so we get a lot of questions here at Visit Norway, Lynn, about being a responsible traveler. And what are some transportation options visitors can take advantage of in and around Bergen? So Norway is actually world leading in green transportation. And uh, also Bergen is far ahead on, uh, uh, so we have the most electrical cars per capita in Norway, actually. And Bergen is one of the top uh, cities as well. And most of our buses or, or all of our buses are either fully electrical or uh, run by um, biofuel. And the taxis in Bergen will all be electrical within uh, 2025. So we're really getting close to um, to being fully electrical. And uh, also the, um, uh, the ferries around Bergen are mainly electrical and uh, we're kind of working towards it to be fully electrical as well. So I think it's is really important and also so m- many countries may say but power is not necessarily green but in Norway we have uh, water power yeah. and also um, um, so some of the attractions are you don't think about it but the uh, the Fleban Funicular, which is one of the top attractions in Bergen and in Norway, actually, uh, it's connected by two, um, the two wagons connected by a cable. So actually the top one drags the other one up going down. So it's really, uh, it, it's been running for more than 100 years. So yeah. we were early with uh, with a sustainable yeah. way to, to get transported. Definitely. Um, as a follow-up question to that, are there any specific experiences um, or activities that you can connect to the same idea or that would interest a traveler concerned with their carbon footprint? Yeah, so also um, you can do a lot of day trips out of Bergen. And one of the most popular ones is the Norway in a nutshell. And that is connected by public transportation set in a system. So you actually do take, it's not a tourist product made for tourists. So you take the local train, you take the local bus uh, and you go on a fjord cruise, which is a fully electrical uh, boat as well. So you're kind of just connecting the dots with things that are already there. So they run because the the locals need it to work in the everyday life. And you just add on the people that visit to experience the same, just in a different way. Mm. And not to mention how beautiful that landscape is Obviously. and how dramatic it is. <laughs> um, what are some top attractions and places a first-time visitor to Bergen should not miss? I, I know it's hard to choose, but if you had to choose three... It is really hard to choose, but um, as I've already mentioned, the Fleban Funicular is one of the top uh, attractions. Or you can go to um, Mount Ulriken, they have a cable car as well. So to see the city from above is one of the must-not-miss things. And uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Site of uh, Bryggen is uh, definitely an icon for Bergen, with the colorful houses, wooden ones... Uh, they have been, there have been houses like these at the same place since the 1100s. They've found traces back to the 1100s. Uh, but the ones standing now are from after a fire in 1702. So really, really old. And it's very strange how you, so it's not just a facade you look at. You go there and you can walk in between the houses. And I think one of my favorite things going in there, because you have the, um, you have the sounds when you're standing outside looking at them, you have the sounds surrounding you. But when you enter the uh, the gateways there, all the sound just disappear. It's absorbed mm. in the old uh, wood. Wow. 
I think what's so cool also is the fires that you mentioned in the past that ravaged all the wooden houses of the wharf, um, which is why it's so incredibly cool to see how the rebuilding of the original architecture that followed old patterns and methods, basically leaving all the old structures preserved, and which is what we see today, right? Yeah, so they had like the <laughs> they had the blueprints of the buildings and they built them exactly the same because it was trade going on there. So one of the reasons Bergen is big or was big uh, also in um, many centuries ago um, is the fish. The stockfish from Norway came down to Bergen and was traded from uh, from Bergen to all over Europe and elsewhere as well. Mm. So I think also it, they had to be quick. They had to rebuild everything so it would work straight ahead. Mm, mm. So much history and culture to explore. Absolutely. So the third thing I would recommend is to dig a little bit deeper and visit one of the historical museums, for instance, or um, the um, the art museums. We have, for instance, the the Kuda Art Museum, where you have a lot of uh, Edward Munch, Munch paintings, uh, the guy that made uh, the scream. Uh, and also we have a lot of uh, street arts uh, if you walk around. And we also have a lot of activities for children as well. So it depends if you're traveling with your family, if you're culturally interested, if you're a history buff or whoever you are, we have something that will suit you. Mm. So what if you're looking at a week-long stay? If you wanted to explore Norway's famous fjords, can you suggest some surrounding areas that would make sense to combine with Bergen? Yeah, so as already mentioned, we have a lot of um, day trips um, from Bergen. So you can do uh, the Sognefjord, uh, the famous Sognefjord, one day north of Bergen. It's the longest and deepest fjord uh, of Norway. And the next day you can go to the Hardanger Fjord, where you can find uh, the fruit garden of Norway with um, uh, with apples. And uh, you can actually go there to taste uh, apple cider, which is a really really nice Norwegian product and it's kind of the local wine because we can't grow wine or we can't grow good wine in mm. Norway yet at <laughs> least uh, but we have some amazing apple ciders wow, yeah really really delicious so I I've think tried it yeah <laughs> so I think it's no matter what you want and you can also so we do have the fjords but Norway is well known for the fjords but we also have an amazing coastline as well mm. so we have uh, Bergen is not just the city of Bergen but it's a larger region surrounding so you can definitely explore uh, the coast you can explore food and uh, also the drinks with uh, with the cider I mm. mentioned already mm. And you can also add on activities when you go on the day trips. So you can go kayaking, you can go biking, and you can even go glacier walking. Uh, and yeah, speaking about uh, about uh, glacier and snow, in the winter you can do a day trip to Voss or Myrkdal to go skiing. And then you can do the after ski back in town. Wow. So Lynn, what are you looking forward to in Bergen in the year to come? So in Bergen, we have a lot of festivals throughout the year. So we have a lot of uh, music festivals. We have uh, a game festival. We have food festival. So we have a festival for pretty much everything. Um, so it's a great time to visit. Uh, and one of the major ones is the Bergen International Festival. That's a combination of um, scene play, uh, dancing and also uh, classical music. So, And on that note, we also, the composer Edvard Grieg, he was from Bergen uh, and his house is now a museum. So you can visit there and uh, listen to a concert with his music being played in the surroundings where they were actually made. And uh, so culture is definitely a thing you should um try and experience when you're in Bergen. and uh, But one of my maybe personal favorites is uh, going up to uh, towards Christmas, we have the world's largest gingerbread town. Wow. So it actually starts uh, mid-November um, and 
people from all over town, uh, friends, families, children, kindergartens, uh, schools, whatever, they contribute to make this uh, gingerbread town. So they bake the gingerbread houses and it's put to system in uh, a beautiful um, beautiful surroundings with atmosphere. You have the lighting, you have the smell, you can smell the gingerbread. So that's the perfect way to get into the Christmas spirit. And also uh, we have a, a beautiful Christmas market and a lot of things going on throughout uh, Christmas. Mm. It sounds magical. And boy, have we made it easy for our listeners. If you want to plan to go to any of these awesome events, check out our suggestions on visitnorway.com. And finally, the answer to our yes, yes, no quiz. Yes, you can go waterfall watching in the region around Bergen. And reindeer hot dogs are very popular. They even have their own hot dog booth that serves reindeer hot dogs. They're delicious. So the false answer, therefore, is B, Bergen is the city with the most rainfall in Norway. Bergen is not the place with the most rainfall. Close, but not quite. If we are to get technical, it's actually the town of Brekke in the Sognefjord that has the most annual rainfall, which is fairly close to Bergen. But the short of it is that no, it does not rain all the time in Bergen. Right, Lynn? That's true. On average, Bergen enjoys 239 rainy days in a year. But to clarify, that doesn't mean it's raining all those days. It just means that there is some precipitation recorded on those days. And when it does rain, it's still magical to experience the city in any kind of weather. And there are lots of things to do outside still. Or you can practice the art of kus or visit one of the many museums that Lynn just mentioned or cozy cafes and restaurants. So now you know. That wraps this episode of Norway Next. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to learn more about today's episode, you can check out visitnorway.com slash podcast for more on travel to Norway. You will also find us on all social media platforms as Visit Norway. So make sure to follow, subscribe, share and love. And thanks for checking out our podcast.